Hello, so I'm going to be streaming for a bit, um, as said, because it's a Sunday, um, you know, as usual, really. Um, so the MSA Advantage finally came. That laser point productions donated for me to buy, so a big thank you to him. Also, a big thank you to Hype, because he gave me a £50 donation the other day towards some night vision. Um, he was interested in me sort of doing a review on. So, um, yeah, big thanks to him, because obviously it massively helps if people want to chip in for some of the gear, because obviously it does cost me quite a bit to get a lot of this stuff. All right, so I haven't actually done much of this yet because I didn't want to be late streaming because um, I've not been in very long and obviously i um, been at work and I wanted to sort of, you know, play about with this on the stream. Um, but this is going to be quite a relaxed stream, to be honest. I'm fairly tired and worn out, so I don't really want to do a, um, you know, all that um, sort of, you know, type of stream. It's still 24 days to Christmas, James, but thank you. And to you. All right, Mike. All right, Stug. All right, yes, yes. All right, Alfie. All right, Survive. All right, Peach. All video base. Yeah, all right, Peach. Very stressful, busy day at work today. I'm not going to go into all that. I was chatting with Mike about it earlier. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just glad to be home and sat down now. Feeling better from what, Sam? What, just being ill in general or whatever? Oh. Um, If it has a weird kind of stock thing on it, yes, AMP, or if it's a black powder. Not if it's like a standard revolver like you get in the US. Oh, of course, I'm not getting rid of it. But yeah, so this is the mask. It's in um, size small, because um, I think that was the only size they actually had in. Um, but that does fit me quite well, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to have to adjust the straps. You might notice that really massive head strap there. So um, I'm going to definitely have to see how you're meant to adjust that, because I can't spot an easy way of doing it. There is a manual with this. Which video was that, Sam? Because um, if you watch the videos like as they go on, they're normally filmed a month in advance. There's no such thing as the Avon S50. Yeah, um, Humane Dispatcher Revolver. Yeah, but they're for like, vets, aren't they? To shoot horses with. I'm just going to warn people right now, right? That as I've had a very busy, stressful day, uh, if anybody's being a dickhead, they're probably not going to get many warnings tonight. Uh, yep, as I said before, Mr. Ginge, it fits Soviet ghost thread, so it'll fit a GP5. So I'm going to get a manual out for this, if you want to see the box. There's the box. Um, so this one's the 410 model, because it takes 40mm NATO filters, or RD40, rather than, you know, taking um, proprietary filters, which is one of the things I hate about lots of half face style masks. You have to keep buying the filter that the company makes. So there's a bag for it, and the instructions are on there. So, looks like you do something on the nose cup to begin with, and then you pull the straps down. Right, let's see if we can follow the instructions as we go along. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the M50. If you've got a complaint, you're going to need to say what's wrong with it. You can't just say something's bad and then not do any more, because then that's not really an argument, is it? For opinion reasons, you know, you're allowed to like or dislike anything, really, but you have to give reasons for it. You can't just say, I hate this mask or it's crap. You know, same with anything, like saying, this film shit. No, give your reasons why you don't like it. All right, all right, Connor, hope you're all right. Right, so let's figure this out. So you have to do something with this bit first, by the look of it. And I don't want to break anything on a brand new mask. So let's look at the instructions. This isn't very clear. It's definitely saying that there's something with that that you have to adjust. It's saying flip up, isn't it? But Maybe that does just flip up. Ah, yeah, there we go. So, ah, I see. It's got a clasp there. So that's interesting. The bit of the strap is held into the nose on this. Ah, so that's how it threads through. It does thread like a normal one, but they've got a really good clasp there. Okay, so... Let's um let's uh see if we can figure it out now. It should be quite easy. I'll take my glasses off to put it on and do the adjustments and then um do it that way. So obviously get this strap first, and weirdly, um the brand faces backwards. So I don't know if that was a mistake on the person in the factory who fitted this bit, but it will fit your head the same anyway, that's not gonna make a difference. So yeah, you just I guess pull these until That head strap's tight. 
that's actually quite a good system to be honest with getting one of these tight so yeah, that should be that i guess then put that down yeah there we go that's that locked and then this will be the easy bit what kind of connector is it one like that okay well on this it's a 40 millimeter nato one so it's not normalized it's just um if you're out this mask it's just 40 millimeter nato right there we go that's that so let's try it with a heavier filter rather than a little particulate one should be fine i imagine That one fits pretty, isn't it? There you go. Right, yeah, that doesn't pull down too much at all. And obviously, if I wanted to, what we could do now is we're going to tighten that a bit more. And it's like, I don't want it uncomfortably tight, but you want it to uh, take the weight all right. And yeah, I reckon now I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to tighten that side because that one is looser than the other one. So, which one do I need to tighten to do that? That'll be the left and right side. Let me disconnect that. Yeah, I've not seen many like it before, but... What I'll do is I'll loosen this one up a bit. I assume you just do it that way, do you? It's also a you know, thing of getting that bit around your head in the right way, so that's equal. All right, I can just do it like that, okay. Um, so, let's get that one to there. I'll get these bits just past my eyes so they're a bit uniform on each side. That's that one. It's a bit tight there. Um, that's that one right now. Let's uh, get them uniform. That's pretty good. Like that bit back there. Okay, there we go. Do that bit again. Yeah, definitely better. Uh, they. Uh, I don't really mind the fat bits back to front, to be honest. It's more just if they get these bits, you know, like all weighing and all like that. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, that holds the weight of a 14mm filter pretty well, as you can probably see. Dual exhale valve, so that's pretty good. I don't know if there are ones you can flip around to face another direction. Let's have a look. Oh. So yeah, there's the exhale valve. I think they might just all... Um, Kind of face like that anyway. Is that connector different on one side or is it just when we have to put a bit of force on it? Well, half face masks aren't exactly new, it's just there's very few that take 40mm filters. Right, let me just pop this off a second. At least now we've adjusted the straps, that's a difficult bit, aren't we? I'm just seeing, can you angle this? So ideally I want it facing like that. Yeah, it's just a case of getting the angle right. Yeah, so that's the same on both sides, I'll leave it like that. There we go. So, yeah, not bad. Yep. Yeah. Right, now let's see if it works all right with my glasses, because that's an interesting bit of these. Oh, good, it does. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yep. Yeah. So, very good uh, recommendation from... Um, Laser Point Productions there, and a big thank you to him again for donating towards this mask. All right, Hype, I said at the beginning of the stream, but a big thanks to you as well for that £50 donation towards the night vision. Um, I suppose I won't find out till tomorrow any more updates on that, because none of the posts really does anything on a Sunday. But yeah, that was the one. Laser asked me if I could get him to do a video on, so I'll do a forward on it at some point. It's similar to that Scott 40mm one, but yeah, it's built to a better standard. Just everything about it's kind of a bit nicer. What's an inflated level A's? Or do you mean like the um, hazmat suits?
I don't recognize the name. Let me search the Cyrillic name for it, like the Russian one, and see what, what comes up. Ah, is that like the PY60M, or is it like a slight variant of that? I've got the Hungarian mask that's very similar to that, but not that one. Uh, it's the name of the stream, Granita Cat, if you can read. But there's two variants. There's the Advantage 410 in the 400 series, which is the one I've got with the 40mm um, port. That one. And then there's the 420, I don't know, 420, which is the dual filter one, which uses Scott's proprietary filters. Um, so obviously I went for the one that's a proper one that takes a standardized filter, not, you know, brand specific filters. So yeah, for the people who didn't say, and I'm just going to say this again, cheers Red Army, um, there's two F1s there, and there's also one of those Hungarian stick grenades there. For the people who didn't hear when I said earlier, because I've had a really busy day at work, and you know, some other shit's gone on, um, I'm not in the mood for anyone being a dick tonight, to um, any me or anybody else, or like, anything like that, so just to warn people, if you're trying to push your luck, don't do it tonight. I'm not saying that to anybody in the chat so far, as in anybody's being a dick, but I'm just sort of saying it as a pre-warning. Um... Hopefully we'll have quite a good stream. If anybody wants to ask questions about anything or chat about certain things, go ahead. Because um, at the moment, the chat's not as active as I thought it would be, even though there's 21 people on. So there we go. Unless YouTube's just doing that thing where it decides half the comments aren't going to show because they're censoring them. Yeah, I'll probably do that, to be honest, by the end of tomorrow if that's if it's not been shipped or marked as shipped um just simply yeah because obviously if it's an expensive item you don't want to um really waste time if they're going to mess you about with it um right mtb the thing is i'm not an american so anything in california isn't really relative to me other than the fact youtube's enforcing it sort of thing my videos aren't made for children, so it really doesn't matter for me. I think it would probably screw over a lot of kids' content creators, but some of them have been quite dodgy in the past. I think it's really going to depend how it pans out when they start doing it. If it's completely over the top or whatever, then it's going to be bad. If it does what it's meant to do, it's not necessarily bad. You have to give a reason, not just saying, is bad. Like I was saying earlier, you can't just say a mask is shit. You have to give your opinion why. Because otherwise it's a pointless thing to say, this is bad, this is good. Because it's not any value to us. No, never been to that Irish ON, you see. Oh, out of all the ones I've got, my CT12 is my favourite. But that doesn't mean it's like the coolest one in my collection. It's just the one I like the most, to be honest. Yeah, very good. I was doing a thing like that just now, Hype. Where um, I was, you know, and I did it with this filter on as well. So it's a bit more weight than just using a particle filter. The straps are pretty good, and the fact they clamp on this bit is actually very good. Um, so, you know, they're, they're not going to pull themselves because they're kind of behind a clasp that you open to adjust the straps and then, like, snap closed again. Um, so, yeah, pretty damn good, actually. So, yeah, with this on, you can certainly use a filter of this weight, no issue, and it fits with my glasses as well. Oh, up there. I'll probably just put some shelves up there at some point, to be honest, because I wouldn't mind putting some proper solid shelves up and putting more Geiger counters or things like that on them, like vertically. Right. If I can remember where I've got that filter stored, certainly. Is it visible behind me anywhere? Just a look. If it's in one of the boxes, I won't be able to get it easily. But no, I can't see it off the top of my head. I actually really can't remember where I've put it. Um, let me just check in here. Because this box I can get at easily if it's in this box. No, it's not in that box. Right. I honestly don't know where that coffee can is. Because um, I said I've started tidying up a lot of stuff recently. So it's probably a case of, um, you know, I've put it in one of the storage boxes quite neatly with loads of other gear. And uh, now it's not going to be easy to get. Right, Survive, I'm just going to warn you, we're not talking about politics stuff or terrorism. I'm going to remove your comment. Um, this is kind of a friendly warning this time. But I don't really like the idea when we've just had a terrorist attack of people kind of going on about, you know, terrorism stuff. Um, I'm not really into military bouts, Bertram, so I can't really recommend any. I certainly wouldn't recommend the 
East German fabric one because it has a really bad buckle system that tends to unclasp itself. Um, I think the leather ones are all right, but the, um, the webbing kind of one the East Germans had is just kind of like a very thin bit of metal that hooks through one bit and then hooks onto another. But as soon as it gets jolted like that, it unhooks itself. No, I don't have any World War One masks. Oh, radiation filter. There isn't a radiation filter. There's particulate filters which block radioactive particles, but there isn't such a thing as a filter that blocks like radiation, like gamma rays or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm planning on going to Chernobyl hopefully next year. But it, again, it's going to be a thing of can I find one that's not overbooked when I can get a holiday from work. Yeah, that happened with one of my knives for years, Mike. This one. Um, the little, um, what's it, lock knife. Uh, Gerber lock knife. This was one that I literally thought it must have fallen out of a pocket somewhere and I would nev was never going to find it again because, you know, it had been years since I last saw it. And then my dad was tidying something up and he found it in a storage box, like very neatly put in there. So what we think happened is at one point <clears throat> he, uh, you know, was tidying up a load of stuff, very neatly packed it away, thinking it was probably a short term thing. Like, you know, in a few weeks time, we'll have some space again. And he was going to open the box and put everything back. And then obviously it just ended up getting piled with other boxes on top of it. Um, it doesn't completely stop it. Something very interesting about gamma rays I've been reading, because obviously I've been doing a lot of research and I'm getting more into Geigers and stuff. What actually happens with gamma rays is if you have a strong source of gamma rays, um, maybe cobalt-60 or something in a decent volume, um, cesium-137, um, the gamma rays halve each time they have to go through a certain um, thickness of like lead or concrete or whatever. So basically... Theoretically, if you had a massively thick piece of lead um, or concrete, you could totally stop gamma rays. But what you're mostly doing is like halving them, quartering them, you know, one eighthing them, one sixteenthing them, whatever, if, whatever the correct term is for that. But supposedly, when I was reading like a science article on it, gamma doesn't actually, you know, stop when it's had enough lead there. What will happen is it will pass through. It just loses half its energy each time it has to um, pass through. Of course I would Red Army when I'm there. But I'm obviously going to do it in a respectful way. I'm not going to be one of those people like, hey, I'm in the exclusion zone. Look, a load of people died here. Isn't that cool? I'm not going to be like one of those twats. But, um, yeah, it will, it will be very interesting to film. Um, the Chinese ones are right, Chris, but they're not actually decimeters. Um, I think Hype sending me one that might act as a decimeter as well as a Geiger counter. But um, the actual Chinese one, although it shows you like what you've been exposed to for a certain period, it keeps resetting itself, but it does work as a Geiger counter. Obviously, you can get cheap decimeter as in decimeter pens, but they're not all that practical. So you have to recharge them on like a DKP50 um, recharging station or whatever. Yeah, how does that actually work, Hype? Because I have seen there like the or are they orange ones, aren't they? Those like radiation filters or whatever they're called. But how do they actually work? Does it have something in that's like a neutralizer for iodine. But is radioactive iodine so small that it would get through a P3 filter anyway, or like a P100 filter? Or does it just completely depend on what it's being exposed on? I'll definitely bring one, I don't know, tutorials, but I'm not going to bring a big military one like that, obviously. I'll just bring one of the convenient little handheld ones. I think, though, legally, from what I've seen, nearly every time you go on a tour there, they have to give you some sort of decimeter or gaga. Oh, you know, um, for those of you that remember, you know, I found that video of the German going in, well, loads of people have seen it, it's not like I found it, but you know, it's on YouTube, of the German guy going into the Pripyat basement hospital, um, the hospital basement, where the fireman's clothes are, um, and his Geiger's like fairly high readings, but not all that high. Um, Wow, I found a video where somebody else went down there with a Geiger counter that actually went up to high ranges. So I think on the German guy's video, he maybe got like two or three um, millisieverts, isn't it? The one off the microsieverts, yeah, millisieverts. I think he was getting two or three millisieverts, which is high, but it's not really, really, really high. Um, all right, thanks for letting me know, Hope. So yes, they are good for what they are then, but yeah. But it's only for like very specialized things then. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this guy 
this guy who goes down there with an actual, you know, Geiger that goes to high range, not, you know, like a Gamma Scout or whatever the German guy had, um, which is, you know, like similar to Soex O1M or Ranilo sort of budgety sort of um, modern Geiger decimeters. Would anyone like to have a guess at what the radiation reading was, either say in Rontgen's or um, Sieverts? I'll give you a clue. Sieverts is the important thing, not Millie Sieverts. But yeah, it, it's quite a lot higher than two, um, two millisiever. It, the irony of the German guy, it's the exact same as thing as 3.6 Ronken. He's like, oh, this is a radiation level because that's as high as his Geiger goes. No, definitely not that many. That would be basically impossible to be that many. Um, I think in sieverts, it was like 2.3 to 3. I know when I converted it to Ronken, it was like 230 Ronken to 240 Ronken or um, Ronkwin equivalent man, whichever dose you use. But yeah, the, the point was that two hours down there near the boot and he'd be dead. Um, obviously, I don't know how much that was alpha radiation, if it could read alpha. I don't know how much is beta, how much is gamma. But he, yeah, he, he has the Geiger counter essentially next to the boot. And while the German guy was getting like two millisievert readings, this guy is getting like 2.3 sieverts because he's actually got a Geiger that goes to the thing. So, yeah, that radioactive dust on the boot is literally, you know, as high as it probably would have been. Maybe it's had a bit of decay in half-life, but it's not, you know, it's not gone down to, like, the millisievert range. That's strange. Although, this one, I ordered months ago, and they only just got it to me. Um, I assume it was back-ordered really far or something, but... Well, I'll probably end up buying another one before then, Maxim, because at the moment, the only two portable ones I have, other than one hype sending me, is the um, Soex O1M, which, if you haven't seen what I've done to it, I might as well get out for this stream, because it's easy enough to show. Um, I've cannibalized it, even though it was in the video today, that video was filmed a month ago. But because I was having issues with the tube in it, I thought I might as well take the tube out. They designed it so you couldn't easily replace the tube, because I guess you have to pay them to do it. Um, so I've just gorilla rigged it up in not the most, you know, not the best way possible, but I've done it. Now, I thought I had it in this drawer, but I can't see it at the moment, so bear with me. Ah, here it is. Not replicas, and they're not functioning rifles, they're DX. Replicas are harder to own than DX in the UK for whatever reason. So what I've done is taken the sides off the SOX, um, so that's literally the circuitry to it, and taking the Geiger Muller tube out, because this is the GM tube with the SOX, and as you can see, mine's pretty beaten up. Um, and I probably fried some of the inside of it, putting on Strontium-90 for too long. So what I've got there is there's a wire there, and a wire there. So what we're going to do, I can demonstrate this pretty easily. Let me open one of my new bags of croc clips up, because I did buy a load of croc clips recently. They should be on here somewhere. There they are. So let's let's get two crop clips out. Let's do a yellow one, why not? And another colour. They're all wrapped around each other, so I can't neatly get. Let's do yellow and red, why not? Oh, they've tied these around awkwardly, haven't they? I thought I was just gonna be able to pull two out of the pile, but now I'm gonna have to uncoil all of them. Don't ask questions like that, Red Army, because if somebody doesn't know you're joking, you could get legally into trouble in a lot of places, and I wouldn't answer it in case I incriminate myself into it. And I actually don't know, to be honest, because I've never worked with math. <laughs> right, I should just do black and red just because it's the easy way, so I'll know, remember which is positive, which is negative. Right. So, what I'm going to do with this, I think one of my GM tubes is over there, like one of my spare ones, um, is... I'm pretty sure on the SOX, the positive is the top terminal. I can't actually see from here which the terminals are. It just won't work if that's the case. But, um... I don't know what you mean by a C10. Again, with croc clips, I wish they did a better thing where they didn't just keep twisting when you're opening them. 
he's always a bitch and I end up pulling him out and then obviously risk electrocuting myself. But I'll tell you what, with this one, I am just going to do that just so it's easier to work with. All right, so there we go. We've got our things on there. So positive and negative. Right. Let me see if I can find my Geiger Muller tube easily. I'll use the old Soviet one because why not? Um... Pretty sure last time I saw my um, thing where I kept the spare tube, it was down here. But who knows? I probably won't even be able to get it now. I've tidied stuff up, and because it's stacked neatly, it's not going to. Anyway, I barely use this scale, so I can go on to the bed. There we go, it's got the way. Um... No, where is it? I thought it was down here, but I literally can't see it. Unless I put it in one of these. Right, that's very irritating. Oh, it's actually, I'll get another tube. I can get this one out easily, actually, very easily. So... The thing is, Richard, it's not actually illegal, is it, to do it? This is the thing. It's like the whole, um, what's his name, David, whatever, the nuclear boy scout. He technically didn't break any laws, did he? I mean, the closest you could say was he was impostering, um, like, professors to get some of the materials, but none of the stuff he actually did was illegal, as far as I know. Yeah. So I think this is a Chinese copy of, like, the modern Russian tubes, like the standard ones. But this works completely fine. Obviously, the only problem is the screen only goes to 99.99 microsieverts. So let's pull this guy out without damaging him. Yeah, there we go. So obviously, being a glass tube, it's a bit more fragile. But at least, I suppose, you don't really dent the glass tubes or anything. So if anybody ever wondered what a Geiger tube does, a Geiger-Muller tube, wire just going through it, essentially. Radioactive um, materials, essentially attracted to that it's from 2019 look if that shows the right way up right so conveniently they have a plus and a minus on here although every time you touch the writing they start fading so that's not brilliant but it's a cheap tube right so let's give this a test when i get this one. again why do they make the croc clips this crap where you can never grip them properly? That'll do. I don't know who the person is that just said bye without barely saying anything. But... Right, so let's reattach this. Yeah, what Hype says. I can kind of imagine in my head how it works, but I'm not very good at explaining things like this, especially when you don't know the terminology. Right, so I'm just going to put this down here a second and get some batteries. Because I obviously took them out before I started messing about with that, because I get counters at high voltage. I think I have some charge down here. No, they're my double A's. Where did I put my triple A's? Unless they're like on the keyboard or something really obvious. Again, this is the problem when you have too much of this stuff. You never know where to look for stuff. Right. Thanks for the heads up, though, Rich. I'll make sure I never joke about anything, because the UK is such an authoritarian shithole now that the police can't take a joke about anything, even if it's something that's not technically illegal. Oh, there's some unopened energizers there. Triple A's that are recharged. We'll just use those. That will do. That will do. Tell you what I can do. If I put this on here somewhere, you'll be able to see it in frame, won't you? Not on the shelf. Um, and then the other battery. 
not as far as I'm aware, radiation wouldn't be very efficient for killing small animals, and it's a bit in inhumane. The mechanical trap is a lot simpler and more efficient. Right, so let's turn it on. There we go. And obviously that is not the right GM tube for the thing, just to point that out. There we go. And you probably can't see the display very well there, but it's going to be impossible to show it very well on a live stream, especially when it's set up like that of a tube. But what you should notice is you're starting to get count. Yep, so 0 0.05 microsieverts. Um, it's counting up a bit now. The thing is with Geiger tubes, a lot of people don't know this. I'll get a source in a second to show you. Um, because there's always background radiation, it's pretty normal for them to fluctuate up and down. Um, that's why as long as you're in like a decently acceptable range, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Because you get some people freak out like, oh, why is it clicking more now than it was like a minute ago? It's like, unless it's going up properly, it's just the background radiation. It's being hit by a little bit more gamma than it was a minute ago or whatever. It's mostly down to filter Nathaniel. Most 40 millimeter masks, if they're just one filter on it, is totally down to a brand of filter and how new the filter is. I can look hype. Unfortunately, a lot of the writing's fading off every time I touch it. No, it's not readable, whatever the model number is. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming it probably is the same mass manufactured tube. They're actually very good tubes, what they are. Um, because considering how cheap some of these, you know, Geiger counters or DIY Geiger counters that yeah, they're getting included are in are coming down, and the fact I reckon it's actually more accurate than the SOEX tube was, um, as in maybe it runs on slightly higher voltage. Well, they've sucked for a while, 762, which is why I've not bought any in a while. Um, if you mean they consistently make things worse, yes, they do. In terms of, um, is it worse now than what it was? That's interesting. I hope it is that tube, because that gives you some idea, doesn't it? If, the thing is, although there's a lot of, obviously, crap that gets made in China, just because they make so much stuff, Chinese military stuff, whenever I've had that, seems to be very good in quality, you know, or at least as good as everybody else's, or, you know, good for what it is. So, yeah, if you were getting a military standard Geiger counter from a very good, sort of, funded army for really cheap. That's really good. Um, anyway, let me get, tell you what I'll use, because it's not all that powerful, In because this obviously won't detect alpha, um, but this little bit of a mericinium um, will give off gamma that I've got in my hand, you know, the ones you get from a smoke alarm. Um, let's see how well it reads that, if I put that there. Look at that. Oh, the screen's gone into power saving mode. Hey, what? Well, let me just put the tube over the top of it. I'll turn the clicking off as well because it'll get a bit annoying. But... Sound, no, there we go. There we go. It's still counting up on the rate. I don't know how well you're going to see that from over there, but yeah, better than the SOEX tube by far. Right, it was a SOEX 01M with this tube in it. This tube was getting damaged, was pretty old, um, you know, not always getting very accurate readings. So I thought, why the fuck not? Let's pull it apart. Um, and now I'm just using crop clips to attach whatever lead I want to it because the case is designed, I think, so you can't retrofit other tubes into it very easily. Yeah, we were talking about him just now, Nathan. Um, is it David Hain, David Hine, something like that, but the nuclear boy scout or the radioactive boy scout? The funny thing is, I rewatched the video on him today with Bart when we were at work, um, you know, listening to it while we were working. And I didn't realise that other than the smoke alarms, he was also um, burning down thorium lamp mantles to get um, thorium trioxide. So, where have I heard that before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah i think people are getting pretty accurate when they're saying i'm like him now but just so the uk government knows i'm not going to build my own nuclear reactor um you know because apparently they'll investigate me if i say that and i also wouldn't know how to build a nuclear reactor because i'm not as smart as david hein or whatever his name is all right cool at some point hype if you know the names of a lot of them can you send me like info on some of the chinese military stuff because searching it in english i couldn't find much info on decimeters um geiger counters you know ionization chambers used by the pla throughout their history i assume early on it was um you know mostly soviet kind of military tech or like copies of soviet military tech but it's quite interesting so yeah, it's a simple looking unit isn't it but as long as it goes up high enough and works what's wrong with that yeah, let's see if I can get a picture of one where they're, they're open. You can see the tube inside. So, yeah, that's at 7.52 microsieverts now, 11 microsieverts an hour or 12 microsieverts an hour dose. But, yeah, the point is that the very weak gamma reading that comes off of one of those, um, it manages with really well. Yeah, but he also didn't do anything wrong, Nathan, in the US. He got investigated by the police because um, one of his neighbours said they thought he was stealing car tyres when he was actually just disposing of bits of his reactor by putting them into his car. Um, cause the thing is, as much as people joke about how dangerous it was what he did, and it was, but you've got to, got to admire him for, you know, his ingenuity. Because the thing is, when I was listening to um, the video of it with Barb, the person doing it was a bit biased because they're going like, Oh, his parents should have stopped him, like, wanting to get into science. It's like, no, it's really good if your kid actually has a healthy interest in something other than, like, video games, fast food, you know, drinking or something like that. You know, that's the problem now is everybody wants, like, safety stuff around it. Um, but, yeah, the reason he stopped it was apparently he was using a Geiger counter and he was finding out that when he went pretty far from his house, the radiation readings were still way higher than normal. Um, so, you know, his shed was actually causing radioactive contamination um so that was the point you know when he decided he was gonna you know pull it all apart and um start disposing of it and then one of his neighbors said oh no no he's, he's stealing car tires and that's when they um yep yeah, we'll be buying it on steam it's already been out for a while but i'm waiting for the steam release which is thursday this week i think um no he died of alcoholism yeah because basically um you know i think when he basically had his passion in life ruined by you know, because the sad thing is with somebody like him, if he went into proper kind of, you know, this stuff properly and like worked for a government agency or, you know, worked for a private company, um, he'd probably do really good things. for you know, like people who are into that engineering type of stuff. But, you know, unfortunately, because, you know, he, he did a lot of it homemade, just, I guess, to prove he could do it, um, you know, and other people were kind of getting really funny about it. Um you know, the thing is, though, like I've said, I don't have anything problem with him because, you know, as much as he probably contaminated a lot of stuff, he was doing it in the name of science, you know, and to be honest, the world would probably be a better place if there were lots of kids interested in science stuff and learning a lot about it. But yeah, he, he died of alcoholism because I think after that, he just probably started drinking heavily. And I think he knew he'd probably really damaged himself through radiation, probably from exposure. Because I know at some point they said they give him a medical test and he refused it because he didn't want to know. I don't know, Survive. I mean, I really don't know what happened. But wasn't he still a teenager, wasn't he, when he did that? But yeah, it, it's the point, isn't it? That if you get a teenager that goes to those lengths, to stuff that a lot of adults wouldn't understand, um, alcoholism nathan as in drinking too much alcohol you get cirrhosis destroy your liver or you just die from drinking too much um you know like anything too much of something's bad uh, i wouldn't get escape from tarkov just because of all the shit they pulled of like the you know um different pre-order packs that gave you in-game perks and multiplayer game disgraceful really but yeah anyway uh let's have a look at what the soex is reading now I still want to know where I put that other um, Geiger case, which had my Soviet tube in it. But yeah, 7.21. Don't know how you can see that from there. But... but the point is, with any of these Geiger counters, if you use crop clips, 
and the voltage is sufficient enough, you get good readings. I think the Chinese tubes probably are better for low level readings and high level readings based on, you know, experimenting with that compared to the SOEX's tube. Um, but yeah, like those Chinese tubes, the price they cost, they're really good. Um, I've got one of those DIY Geiger counters on order as well, where, you know, they give you like a circuit board and a couple of bits and you do it. Um, no, I've not been to Hat Green. I've been to um, Calverton Hatch, the really big one for basically the big shots in government in case we got hydrogen bombed. And then again, they probably wouldn't have made it there in time because if it went hot really quickly, you know, they weren't going to be able to get them there in secrecy and everything else. On holiday... Probably not next year, but the coming year, because I want to do it with a couple of mates, you know, and do a lot of it as like a shooting sort of holiday. Um, yeah, exactly, Richard. I know that all too well. Um, there's so many things that I find interesting or like I know people who are kind of interested in, but because they're not such a mainstream thing, they get ridiculed for it. And, you know, it's just sad, isn't it, really, to be honest, but. That's cool. Let me search it. But you can probably replace the tube quite easily, can't you? Okay, let me open Discord and have a look. Um, but yeah, I'd imagine it's probably very easy just using crop clips to replace the tube, even if it, you can't get a new tube that fits the fitting correctly. Because um, I've tested a few tubes of that, and they all work. The readings can be a bit... Because uh, again, a lot of the times tubes require certain voltages. But in terms of um, low-level accuracy, that tube is really damn good. And when I te stress tested it with the strontium, it actually took um, went higher than the, this tube did. Although I think technically the mini monitor can't display more than 999.99 um, micro sievert, so it basically gets to one milli sievert, then can't show anymore. You can work it out from my username, Connor. And if you did it now, because it's still this year, you'd be completely correct if you managed to guess it because it's not the, you know, of where the month is in the year. No. You can open it. Um, I'm not getting it down, because obviously I have to move all the display stuff to do it. But the charging handle moves, but isn't connected to anything. Um, the bit in the charging handle doesn't fold it flat on its own like it would if it was um, working. The trigger's welded shut. Um... The safety's welded. The only thing you can really do with it, other than, you know, just manually move the um, thing back and forth, is open up the hinge on it, take the dust cover off, and see some of the internals that haven't been pulled out or welded completely into kind of a mush. Yeah, I've got been on Gas Mask King. There's quite a few Gas Mask websites. I'll give you them as recommendations. They're the ones that the Gas Mask official Discord um, recommends. Um, so there's Gas Mask Lexicon. Gasmasker.cz, uh, gasmask one dot Kalashni, is that just Kalashnikov? Uh, dot hu gasmask, gasmask king. There's also the gasmask wiki. Quite a few people are trying to improve at the moment. Yeah, it'd be interesting if you can just cheaply sort out a thing. I think Discord's loaded up now. There we go. Um, I imagine you could replace that, couldn't you? Is it just a two-pin connector, but they're both at the bottom? Because if that's the case, surely you can just get a crop clip, pull one over the top, and then connect that down that way. With pretty much any tube. I reckon that would work fine. That's a cool-looking unit, actually. Is that the battery cap on the top? If so, that's quite clever, isn't it? Because it means everything you need to access is on the top if you've got it in a bag. You don't have to lift it out to get it a bit. So, 0 0.1. Is it in Rontgen's or Sieverts, that one? I assume it's Rontgen's if it's from the 70s. So, it would be X0.1 milli Rontgen, I imagine. X1 Rontgen. Um, oh, milli Rontgen, sorry. And then I assume where it has another set of X01, X1, X10. Actually, no, that it goes the other way, doesn't it? So, or does it? I'm trying to work out which way it goes from. 
But I'm assuming it's both Millie Ronkin and Ronkin, isn't it, that unit, looking at the pictures? Yep, so the good old-fashioned unit that's easy to understand for normal people. It was in the British Radiac uh, counters, Shackleton, or the American ones, because I think there was an American brand, Geiger, called Radiac, but with a K. But yeah, the British Radiac is in Radiac Survey Meter number two. That's not actually a Geiger counter, though. That is a... Um, I'm pretty sure they are um, ionization units, like that German one I've got. Oh, good news with this German one. It seems to be kind of working now, but I won't be able to test it properly until I have a high, um, higher source. But if I um, do a circuit check on it now, that goes to where it should on that one. Needle goes all the way up. Um, if I do M and C, the needle should stop at zero. Oh, the problem is I'm holding it like that, and it won't display properly if I hold it like that. Right, that stopped just about zero. I'll just use the zeroing to get it on the zero. There we go. Yeah, if I go to B, the thing stops right in the middle of um, circuit check. So if I go to measuring 0 0.5 Ronken, um, yep, the needle is sitting on zero now. I think now I've done the case up properly and, and I've kept it somewhere warm to get any moisture out of it. This is working all right. I don't think its beta sensitivity works like it should, though. I'll, I'll give it a quick test for you guys. But yeah, it's... Um, again, the problem is, I think the Radiac one was built a bit more sturdily and had less functions. The problem with this is, because Kraut Space Magic, obviously the Germans decided an ionization chamber, which is the simplest kind of radiation detecting equipment, had to have loads and loads and loads of moving parts in. And of course, in typical German fashion, some of the most important moving parts are the most fragile. Um, a note to Germans, if they want to build stuff like this that's really well engineered, like they do, but also really reliable, use sturdy parts and make it idiot-proof. Um, what I'm going to do is, because I've filmed the video on this yet, I'm just going to... Uh, I've filmed the video on it so far where I took it apart, you know, showed the bit that broke, um, put it together and was getting annoyed with it. I'm just going to film, like, an intro bit that I'm done in hindsight, saying, look, this is meant, isn't meant to be a Germanophobic video. Because, you know, I get a bit up, um, you know, because I get a bit upset with the Geiger counter because of how over-engineered it is. Um, and, you know, saying, I think it is working now. Um, and I'll try and explain a bit more carefully, you know, at the beginning as a kind of a pre-warning, which bits, you know, this bit sort of happen. Anyway, let me get my Strontium 90. Yeah, the last time I was streaming hype and you said I should have gloves, I actually had these and just forgot I bought them. But yeah. Right. If you want me to put that, will it go any further now? Yeah, right. You won't see it move the needle where you are, even if it does move, but. Right, Strontium 90. Let's put you underneath. What I'll just check is that the flap is open and there. Yep. Yeah. Right. That facing upwards, yeah. Right, even on 0 0.5 Rontgen, um, about a 300 milli Rontgen per hour beta source isn't making it move. So it could be there's a problem with that getting through for whatever reason. But in terms of um, the needles go where they should at the moment, other than that, yes, it's working. Um, so yeah, time will tell with that, whether it works or not, when I get some radium stuff. Uh, that will be giving it a really good test, but um, yeah, at the moment, yeah, I will do. I'll give them a wash after the stream. I've just put them back in the bag now. So, um, but yeah, the strontium nineties in like a sealed check source kind of thing. Um, I will do your mother, but it will have to be when I visit Mike. When I know a date I'm visiting Mike, I could let you know the day in advance so you know which day it's going to be on. But, yeah, but, so, yeah. Anyway, Shackleton, what I was going to say is if you're interested, I'll just turn this back off for now. Um, if I show you this, I'm pretty sure the Radiac Survey Meter number two is an ionization chamber similar to this. Um... If you have a GP5 in very good condition and you put a brand new CBRN rated sort of military filter on it that fits it properly, 
it should be fairly damn good against most war gases. The issue is, obviously, as the masks get older, more parts are likely to fail, and, you know, other parts that are still intact might be weaker against things like blister agents, and old expired Soviet filters aren't going to really protect you from much against particulates and tear gas, if they're in. Right. Anyway, if you want to see the unit itself, Shackleton, I'll get that out for you. So, it's in a lovely bake light box, and it has a little annoying carry strap there that sort of gets in the way. You can take it off, but I'll leave it on. Um, so, here are the functions on it. It's got a long list of German instructions. Um, you know, put this switch here and this switch here to see this thing. Put this switch there, this switch there to see that thing, sort of thing. But ideally, the functions of it were that it would show you from 0 Ronken per hour to 0 0.5 Ronken per hour, or in like 0 to 500 milli Ronken per hour. Uh, on the lowest setting, all the way up to 500 Ronken per hour on the highest setting. Now, in theory, this should accurately read high radiation levels, unlike a Geiger counter, because iron chambers are better than that, because they can't become saturated, as far as I understand. Whereas, um, whistling, actually. I thought I turned it off. Oh, no, it's still on. 0 0.5, isn't it? There you go. Um, so, that's that. It has an alarm function as well. Um, whether or not that will work properly, I don't know. You need test source in there to do that, the check source. Um, the dosis bit, this is like the coolest bit of it, um, goes from 000 to 999 Ronken. I suppose if it gets to 999 Ronken, you know you're definitely doomed and to shoot yourself in the face. Um, but the point is that it has like a decimeter built into a Geiger counter. Well, it's not a Geiger counter, uh, ionization chamber, which is pretty cool. I'm surprised more didn't do this because it's actually quite easy to do. All it obviously does is it calculates per hour. After an hour, it probably just calculates what the needle is on when the hour ends, and it like rolls up. Um, or I suppose what it might do is if it's at 10 Ronken per hour, it might be like every six minutes of one just clocks over. Yeah, exactly, but it's over-engineered. And then at the bottom, you've got your beta window. Um, there's the battery compartment for one D cell. You've got your beta window, which is um, just like metal and plastic. And then underneath that, you've got a bit of paper, and there's the iron chamber. Um, oh, I, I, I've always liked NBC sort of stuff. And when I say that, I mean nuclear biological chemical, as in it's fascinating. And the thing is, in history, I find generally the more horrifying parts of history are kind of the most interesting. Um, you know, when some people were doing history at my school and they were interested in, like, what dresses or, you know, uniforms men and women wore kind of thing you know in this period of history i was more like what weapons did they use you know what sort of plagues did they die of 1960s um apparently they turn up now and again in germany but i don't think they were very mass produced and the reason for that is probably quite obvious when you see my video if it wasn't work seeming to work right now i'd take it apart again and show you the insides but um Depends how it's cut, Simon. A beard, yes. If you have attached groom to out here, most likely no, because most oral nasal cups will fit around there, and it's not going to break the seal. That's why they were popular in World War I, supposedly. Um, but yeah. The point is, the issue with it is, um, let me see if... I don't know why my phone screen will show up on the PC uh, webcam, but if it shows up, what I'm going to do is show you some of the photos of the inside. And I'll explain the main problem with it um, that I ran into. Because, again, it has lots of clockwork bits where one bit's meant to be in one position to knock another bit into the you know, position when you have one switch in one place. That doesn't work very well because there isn't kind of a reset button to get them to turn back if one's knocked one just out of place. Um, the other problem was how they'd done the check source. They'd done it in a really stupid way. Um, right. Let's see if I can get that picture. I'll get the phone a bit brighter, then we'll see. All right, hopefully, oh, that does show up quite well on this phone on the webcam. Right, so what you're looking at there, that's the ionization ch chamber unit with the little paper sort of lid on it, which obviously allows beta through. Um, in theory, ion units can actually detect alpha radiation um, from what I was seeing, but I don't know what from range that is. Um, so basically, it's got loads of circuitry in it, right? The problem is, if I don't know how well it will show up on here, let me. Can you see it from here, or do I need to get a different angle? Right, you can. I'll zoom in on it. So, this is where the problem lies. This piece of plastic there with the screw on it, 
that's a rotating thing. The check source for it, which is about 3.5 Ronkin per hour, it's a very heavy check source. I'll demonstrate that on the mini monitor in a minute, but most of my Geigers can't read it. I'll try on that Chinese tube actually in a minute because it's a very low energy beta source that so behaves like alpha, really. The check source is permanently under there in the ionization chamber. What happens is when you switch it to the check source mode, the plastic thing moves out the way, allowing the thing to go into the iron chamber. That's how you get a radiation reading. Now, I won't completely tell you what it is so far for the people who don't know, so I want you to guess, because it should be quite easy, but apparently not evident to Germans, you know, because there's always flaws in German engineering like this, where they make something really nice and complicated that should be magnificent, and there's shitty parts that let it down, which they couldn't be bothered to make better. What is the problem with having a very strong check source, either in a Geiger counter or an iron unit, anything like that, um, that has a little plastic part covering it? Are they indeed your mother? <laughs> I thought Czech Republic was the best for that. SV500, I have to look it up, Martin. But has anyone has anyone guessed yet? I want I want you to take a guess because this is kind of interesting if you're designing something like this. You know there was that really, really bad British tank that they actually use as an example tank later on on how not to design a tank because like everything had been done wrong on it. Um That, that looks a lot better. I mean, that looks like a proper Geiger counter, at least. Has anybody seen the really weird-looking East German Geiger counter? If not, I'll get a picture of it up now. Um, right, where is it? I think it was designed to be vehicle-mounted. That makes more sense. Um, right, it's called the RWA-72M. Hang on. Here we go. So... East Germany, because they're still Germans, they have to do things impractically. But here's the East German one. Now, bear in mind, this is a standard kind of range Geiger counter. What's the impractical looking bit of this? Yeah, Valiant, that's the one. So, look at that, because it seems both... Both the Germanys are prone to this, just like Nazi Germany was in World War II, and I imagine Germany did a lot further back as well. Because it's weird, like, Germans, and I'm not saying this to be Germanophobic, I'm just saying this is a general sort of thing. They can make some really bloody good stuff, but often they seem to, you know, make something that's like 99% perfect and put a massive design floor in them that lets them down. But yeah, nobody's guessed yet, right, I'll tell you. So, with the West German ionisation unit, it's a flimsy piece of plastic on a complex um, clockwork mechanism is not good with anything like that. What happens is the plastic snaps like it did on mine after enough times of trying to put it back or your clockwork mechanism breaks. Your check source is left exposed and you can't use your counter properly because it's already being flooded with a massive amounts of radiation. Um, yeah, and with the East German one, it's that the probe is a stupidly big size. To the point it's going to be really impractical to carry or do anything with it. I'm assuming that they actually did have a smaller probe they could have used, but it seems weird when you see examples of those on a little tiny Geiger box unit, and then you've got like a bazooka sized um, probe. Like, as much as I'm sure that's a very good, accurate probe, and I'd love to have one in the collection to mess about with it, that's not very practical, East Germany, is it? Yeah, that's that's the pro problem with Germans, they overdo everything. If it the thing is with iron chambers, this is why that one annoys me, because otherwise it would be really good. If you look at the US CDV 715, that's like a very basic iron chamber unit that probably works really well for what it is, because it's been made simply and cheaply, like iron chamber units should. When Germans make iron chamber units, they have to make them as complex as possible. So while it has some nice quality of life features, the entire thing can be broken by one of those, you know, incredibly complex features not working. Like again, if the check source cover breaks and floods the chamber of radiation. Um, there's lots of nuke tests they did in space survive. It causes massive EMP blasts when set off in space. Um, if you want to donate, Chris, thank you very much. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You can do it via Super Chat on YouTube. You can do it on Patreon below. Um, 
technically you can PayPal me as well, but I prefer that if people only want to give a really big donation because otherwise you kind of have to give out more personal info for it. Um, but Patreon or Super Chat's the easiest way. Yep. Oh, another problem with this hype. You've reminded me. Right, the switches on this are pretty strong mechanically. Like that. Yep. To take the top cover off properly from the bottom cover, you have to undo the bottom screws, and you have to take those off so it doesn't do it. So then, let's say, you're messing about with this because you want to get something into position to repair it or work on it. What ends up happening is, because one of those screws isn't in there, I mean, I think in theory you can take it apart and then remember to put the screws back in, which I didn't, uh, or didn't even think to do. If you turn that too far, oops, you overstressed a bit and broke it, um, because you can physically turn those, um, you know, switches further than they're meant to go. And um, because those screws aren't there, which are like the safeguard to stop you doing it now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Vladimir said a very good thing in the stream the other day when I was complaining about this. He said, you know, I was, I was saying how much I liked a lot of Soviet equipment. And he says, you know, the brilliant thing with Soviet gear is the manual is the last resort. It's designed to be so user friendly. And it is because I cannot speak Russian at all. Um, I cannot understand Cyrillic at all when it's written down. But if I if I get a piece of Russian like military gear, I can generally figure out how it functions very easily just from kind of playing with it. Um, I, I don't know, Shackleton. I'm pretty sure the Soviets design lots of stuff that'd be squaddy proof. Um, yeah, thank you, Ghost Jesus, because some of those things get expensive. But anyway, I'm just going to run to the toilet quickly. Um, stay put. And then I'm going to show you how strong the source of radiation is the Germans put in that. Um, not this one, that's my mini monitor. But this, I had to take the check source out because as soon as that bit of plastic went wrong inside, which it basically will, I think, if you ever do anything inside the Geiger counter because of how, I think even a shock like to that, to the unit could essentially knock the plastic out of place. Um, the, the point was um, that, what was I getting at? Yeah, I had to take the check source out because as soon as that check source goes wrong, um, you know, the cover on it, you're getting 3.5 Ronkens per hour worth of radiation. I wish it was 3.6, but it's 3.5. Um, you get 3. So three and a half Ronkens per hour of radiation inside your Geiger counter. Well, or, you know, ionization chamber. Not easily. I, there was two bits that went wrong with it. Let me go to the toilet and then I'll tell you um, what it was. Oh, thank you very much, Chris. If you've got a Discord ID and want to post it, you can get invited onto the server. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I'm glad I didn't miss it when I was gone. Okay, so um, let me show you how overpowered that source of radiation is. But the funny thing is that it's a very weird check source, um, as in it's... 50 um, microcuries of a source, which is massively 
uh, strong. For example, most Czech sources are like 0 0.25 microcurie or something. So, of course, the Germans have to make it big. You know, I just like to say Tiger Tank, it is big. Um, but there's something very strange about it. It's a beta source, but it's a very, very low energy beta. So it behaves like alpha. And I've never encountered anything like that before. So I thought to start with it was an alpha check source, but it's not. It's called Carbon-14. Um, I don't know if there's any other check sources like it. There probably are. But I've never encountered anything like that before, that you can have something in one classification that basically doesn't behave like that. Um, Microcuries, it's a thing how they measure like the size of a radioactive sample. It's also barracules, isn't it? Or bacules or something is the other one they use. Microcurie is easy, like as in Madame Curie or the Curies, it's easier for me to remember than barracule or whatever. And microcuries seem to be easier numbers because generally every source is in microcurie range. Um, if I am, whack, um, Putin hasn't paid me yet, so I'm a bit annoyed for that. So yeah, thank you anyway, Chris, again. So let me demonstrate the source to you, because this is fascinating. Um, so let me get the check source, which I have down here. I've got it in a bag, so I won't contaminate myself. All right, which bag did I put it in? Because I've got lots of bags in here now. now. Let me just check if my DKP50 has gone up at all. From being surrounded by all that radioactive material, probably not. No, well, not noticeably, and it discharges over time anyway. When I get the um, radium, I'll definitely test that. Right. Let me find my check source. All right, thank you, uh, Chris. Sorry, for some reason, as soon as I went to the toilet and come back, my like, ears are popped, and I feel really congested. Um, but yeah, let me add you to Discord now, and then I'll carry on with the stream. Uh, if people didn't hear, I might go for an hour and a half to two hours tonight. Um, because, um, what was I going to say? Because, yeah, it's a Sunday. Although I've got quite a bit to do tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I won't be streaming tomorrow. Because um, I can't reliably give any sort of time for it. Because I've got a dentist appointment in the afternoon. as like the annual checkup one. Um, I've got stuff I need to wait in for earlier on in the day. And I'm out in the evening. So there's like no point in me promising to do a stream because I'm you know, going to have to cram it in. All right, there we go. Uh, let me invite you to the server, and then I'll close Discord again. Um, doo -doo -doo. Pending. It's not pending if you accept the invite to server. There you go. Right, done. All right, closing Discord again so I don't get distracted. Right. Here we go. So, also... Thank you, that M17 guy. If you already have me on Discord, I think you might have donated before, but if you haven't, give me your ID. Um, right, I'll have to get on Bart's case. Of, oh, wait, he's doing the XM28 next. Um, but again, it's often I ask him to do it. He says, yeah, I'll do it tonight, and he doesn't get around to it. Um, but, you know, thank you. So, also, I don't mind touching this in my hands, because I was reading about this, and you have to ingest so stupidly much of this or inhale it to even be dangerous, because it's such a weird radiation source. So if you want to read the German on the back, if it focuses, it never likes to focus if my face is in frame. Which is, I always forget, because a lot of people have different YouTube names to um, Discord names or whatever. Um, and I'm just bad at remembering everybody on there. Right, is it going to focus? There we go. But yeah, it's carbon-14, and it's 50 microcuries worth of um, source. Yeah, 50, what looks like the Greek U, but that means the one they use for micro and MC. So anyway. Yeah, that's the thing when I was reading into it. But yeah, this is what they use as a check source. Also, another annoying thing, because Germans. Um, this looks like, right, you might be able to unscrew the check source from there and then put the plate back in. Because I think as well, they've designed the iron chamber where this plate needs to be in the bottom to make a proper circuit. Um, but guess what? Even if you unscrew it, like I tried the other day, it just removes a bit of the metal frame. It doesn't remove the actual check source from the frame. Otherwise, that would be practical, wouldn't it? And simple, but no. German engineering, right? So I'll show you something very interesting now. 
So I'm interested in how well this Chinese tube will pick it up. So to give you an example, so far I have found the only check sources I have, sorry, um, the only um, Geiger counters I have which pick this up properly are the, um, the mini monitor is the only one that picks it up properly other than the unit with it obviously inside the unit. The civil defense one, the CDV 700, because it's so high voltage, it gets more of a reading than most Geiger counters do with, you know, just the beta tube. Um, so at the moment it's saying it's 009. Right, let's hold this up um, to the tube and see if we get a reading. It, it knows something's there. This is the interesting thing. Okay, what's it going to stop at? We'll, we'll let it stop at something. Because what I want to show you is just kind of how different it is when you have an alpha probe that can read it properly. And the reason is it's so low energy. And the thing is, if I had this tube inside the Chinese case, because there's more space, or even if you had like the SOX one, you know, of the tube where it would have been there, that distance is enough so this kind of can't read it. Right. It's stopping about 0052. Oh, it's gone up a bit higher. But the point is, it's not crazily high, right? Um, it's not getting anywhere near 3.5 Ronkin, is it? Because it's not going into the um, millisievert range. It, it's thinking it's like high in microsieverts, but not that high. Right. So anyway, that's that's enough of showing up the minimal. But yeah, I'm impressed by this Chinese tube because it gets way more of a reading than um, a lot of the tubes do. So congratulations on that. That is very good, especially for the so so cheap tubes. Right. Mini monitor time. Everybody knows this is one of my favorite ones. A good bit of British engineering, very basic British engineering. It has a battery check function and on function. But it works, right. Also on those scales that goes up, um, you know, bigger numbers as it gets higher. So you don't need to flip a thing. Here we go, right. So battery check, fine. On, right. That cap is to block alpha radiation. So you put the plastic cap on if you want to um, read beta. You take it off for alpha. Let's put the speaker on. There we go. So, first we'll do it with the beta shield on, because remember, this is technically beta radiation, but most Geigers can't read about it. And remember, it barely moves the other one. So, from here... I'll tell you what, it's just a little hole in there that's making that take a reading. So, um, yeah, so this is different. This has an alpha mica window on it because it's um, an alpha probe. This is a mini monitor 5.10, is it? This is quite an old model, but essentially the new ones are this with a fancy looking housing on. Right, let's see what happens with this needle when the carbon 14, because it's 50 microcuries, gets close to the thing. That. I don't want to blow the tube, but see how quickly it moves? So yeah, that is very high in radiation. It's just such a weak source that you don't really have to fear it at all. It's, it's weird, isn't it, thinking about that? You can have something that gives off about 3.5 ronkens of um, radiation per hour, but it's almost entirely harmless to humans because it's so, so poor at penetrating things, it can't do much. But yeah, isn't isn't that strange that you need an alpha probe to read a bit of beta radiation effectively? But, you know, like I was saying, I'm very impressed with this Chinese probe um, just because, um, or Chinese tube, sorry, that it actually picks that up to a degree where you notice it. A lot of the Geigers won't move at all on it, or they'll go up like 0 0.001 microsievert when you put it next to it. Um, so there you go. Why you'd use that as a check source, I don't know. I mean, it's quite safe as a check source, I suppose, because it lasts ages, which is what you want on a check source, so it doesn't degrade and give you a false reading. And um, my ears keep popping. It's really annoying. Um, and, uh, you know, it's pretty safe. However, how it was implemented into the counter is one of the most stupid things I've ever seen. Right. So saying about the plastic bit earlier, you're saying, could I replace it? Originally, I wasn't going to even have to replace the plastic bit because the plastic bit, you know, 
was still there. The problem I was having is, for whatever reason, a bit of the mechanical thing jumped. So when you put the switch, rather than it being R was the only setting when it was open, R and another setting was leaving it open, and one of the other settings wasn't. So I was like, right, what I need to do is I dismantled it, and I was like, I'll take this bit of plastic off. Um, I'll try and keep trying different combinations of having the wheel in a certain place, and then hopefully I'll get to the combination where when it's set to R, it's off. On the other settings, it's over it, because it's one of those like weird switches that goes doo-doo and then resets. Um, you know, using like a weird kind of metal thing that's meant to block it when it gets to a certain stage, but not on the others. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how, but I've tried a couple of other tubes in this as well. Every tube I've tried, it's worked fairly well. Actually, but this one works better than the SOX tube as far as I'm aware, because it's higher accuracy, and it seems to go still to a higher range. But um, it's probably just the operating voltage is fairly similar, but... Yeah, so what was I saying about that Chinese one? So yeah, anyway, it was jumping. So I figured out to reset it, what I had to do was um, take the plastic bit off, which I did, and then, you know, keep trying different combinations, essentially take the plastic bit off, keep turning it by taking the screws off till it would jump the circuit again and trying it in different positions till hopefully I'd eventually find a combination of switches. Um, right, on this, there is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's 10 switches total, but there's one with three and one with seven settings. That's quite a lot of combinations of switchings, switches to try, um, you know, to get this combination, which gets quite frustrating when you're unscrewing a bit, putting a bit on, trying a load of things, putting it back. So I was about 20, 30 minutes into trying loads of different combinations, where one of the times the piece of plastic snagged and snapped because it was old and brittle, and you know, and this plastic is like this thin, because of course your 3.5 Ronken radiation shield is going to make, be made out of cheap, flimsy piece of plastic. Yes, I could definitely replace it, but if I can get the Geiger counter working without that check source in it, I might as well do that, sorry, the ionization chamber, because I really don't like how they've designed it full stop. It's on that wall over there, just to prove it. There you go. Um, yeah, I've seen some very funny retrofitted ones like that M17 guy, but the um, PNVE, um, what's it, the PNVEs, PNV57Es are very nice for what they are. Um, Hype's bought the thing where it's like those built into binoculars, which is quite cool. All right, happy holidays to you, Shot Zombie, as well. It's Thanksgiving at the moment, isn't it? Or it's just been Thanksgiving. It's too early for Christmas yet, in my opinion, even though we're into December now. Um, but yeah, the point is, I don't, oh yeah, you can see it on there, right? Let me zoom in a bit more. So here's the problem. That, is it going to be too bright for the webcam? Let me lower the brightness a bit. And try again. Right. That thing there is the thing that catches the wheel as it spins. probably not going to focus on it that well but the point is underneath that white piece of plastic where the blocking bit is there's a weird kind of bit where one side is rounded the other have catches in um so yeah the point is it has this incredibly complex mechanism for hiding the check source um a worst german um shot zombie radiation detector, which works on an iron chamber principle rather than the Geiger counter. Um, yeah, it's it, it's not great. Um, it, it looks like it would be a really good unit if it was brand new and, you know, you had it serviced and you didn't need to do anything with it. If you buy an old surplus one, I hope you've got luck on your side because some of the parts in this are very fragile and very German. That's interesting. I didn't know that height, but yeah, interesting. Yeah, but this isn't a Geiger counter. Does that seller have like a, just a regular Geiger counter? If they do, go for that. This is an iron chamber. It's different than a Geiger counter. Lots of people confuse them. I keep wanting to call it a Geiger counter, as you know, because I use Geiger counter as like the thing for all radiation detectors. But an iron chamber, what that actually does is it's very good at measuring high levels of radiation. 
Um, so if you're familiar with the American Geiger counters, the CDV 700, um, I've got the raindrop trousers and the raindrop kind of field shirt. Is the tunic a different thing? Also shot zombie though, something interesting. If they let me do it, I'll definitely do this for you at some point because you've donated enough for me to do it, um, to afford it. On Teespring now, they let you do camo clothing. Um, I probably wouldn't be able to get away with this as selling it as merch, and I'd feel a bit bad for doing it, but you might be able to design it to buy for yourself. And you can basically upload a picture that you want repeated. So I was hoping I could get a decent high-res picture of Blumenthal and then get it, um, you know, like printed in a proper camo print on um, one of their things. Yeah. So yeah, if I if I demonstrate what the difference is, I'm not going to open that, but an iron chamber kind of looks like that. Let, let me get you some pictures up, actually. Um, the easiest way of um, demonstrating it is, let me just get this off my keyboard. Oh, this is still on, isn't it? Whistling away. I could shock myself with that if I wanted to. But let's not do that. It's measuring zero, of course, because the tube's um, connection's come off on that side. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back in my Chinese unit because that's more practical than the SOX at the moment. Let me just put the tube aside. Oh, let's put it on there for now. It's not going to get broken on the top of a plastic box. Um, yeah, if you can get it with good lighting, um, that would be ideal, you know, like as flat as possible on so I can repeat the thing without it looking too bad. Um, What the um, survive you on about the Geiger counter or the um, ionization chamber? The iron chamber is very sensitive to moisture, apparently, especially how the Germans are designed it because it's not a closed unit. Like the CDV 715, I'll get you some pictures up in a moment. No, I didn't know that. Shots on me, but that's very interesting. Yeah, right. Let me let me let me get these pictures up before I get too distracted so I can go on about the point I was making. Right. So we'll get the CDV 715 and we'll get the CDV. Is it 718? Um, is it the 17? No, the 718 is a really, really nice one. Is it 719? What, what's the number of the bloody thing? Um, was it like 720 or something it was called? Uh, yes, 720? Yeah, it's the 720. Yeah, right. OK, I can demonstrate this now. So. If I get, this is a good picture of it. Um, these are going to be pretty low res, but so this is the CDV. This is the CDV 720. This is the closest one they did out of that series to this German one because it's an iron chamber with a beta shield at the bottom or, you know, like a thinner bit so beta radiation can penetrate it. The 715 is the one that's just a simple iron chamber. Right, here's a picture of this one. So to give you an idea of how simple, let me just see if I can get this higher res because it's one where you open it from Google and it opens a really low res one. Here we go, this is much nicer. Right, so this is the 715. I've got one of these on order from America. Probably might turn up in the week if I'm lucky. If not, it'll be the week after, but it is on the way. Um, this is the CDV 715, this one. This is the really simple iron chamber unit. This is how simple the Germans could have made that unit. Just, just to make you aware. This also does the same range pretty much as the German one did, but just, you know, with a needle that moves. It doesn't have any dissimilar functions or alarms or anything like that. So the CDV 720 is basically the equivalent of the German one, but notice still how simple it looks on the inside because it still fits into that case. So, yeah, the 720 looks quite interesting, but I think they're a lot rarer. But, again, the only issue is it's the same ratios that the 715 uses. So, it, you know, the lowest setting is 0 0.1 on the, is it 1 to 10 Rontgens? They, 1 to 5 Rontgens, isn't it? They start off on, so it does the, um, or like 0 to 5 Rontgens. So it's, it starts off on like 0 to 500 milli Rontgen. Um, yeah, that would be ideal shot zombie. And then I can set an order up with Teespring if they let me do it. So I can actually get one and then sometimes wear it. That would be great if you could do that for me. Um Well, people are going to hear sirens, but knowing modern people, mobile alerts would work better. But yeah, a 720 looks quite nice. 
but something very interesting with the 715, because you know, um, cheers, shots on me. You know how um, simple those CDV 700 series are? And I will just get one to show people um, who don't know. Again, they're not as mechanically simple as the Soviet Geiger counters, but I do love how easy to access these things are. So, basically, the entire unit is just housed in this case. So, um, there you go. So, that is the entirety of a CDV 700 Geiger counter. This is an actual Geiger counter, this one. See the Geiger Muller tube there? Um, all right, cheer shots on me. Um, the only bit this one has is that bit there for adjusting the voltage. Now, interestingly, I love these, the smell of these old circuit boards. They remind me of my granddad's attic for some reason. Ah, good. They have actually marked on here, which is good, where the original zero was set to. See that? Um, or like... So yeah, basically, where it is where I've got it vertical, that's where, when it was last serviced, they set it to. Eventually, yes, survive. Also, you have to worry about battery life and things like that. But Geigers can be fairly tough units if they're built like this, especially the old analog ones, because there's barely anything to them, you know. There's some circuitry. Anyway, the point I was getting to is because these are so simple, the CDV series, the 720 and the 715, you can actually mod them. And there's a video where a guy's done it. It's not the best done video, but a guy had done it, so it, it works, where he'd lowered the range of it. So instead of going from um, whatever it is, zero to um 100 ronken whatever it is for 500 series 500 ronken isn't it but it starts off at like you know in like 10 ronken like 0.10 ronken intervals doesn't it if you're on the 0 0.1 he'd set it to be in the milli ronken range um not too heavy it's a bit awkward because it's not got a good carry strap system you put the strap on there and there um, but it's not a good strap. It's like a very low quality strap. So I tried using it as a strap for a while. And I just prefer holding it in my hand. Um, but yeah, that's all is there to the bottom case. Um, but yeah, so this guy had basically in a video put a bit more circuitry in it, what it'd done with the CDV 715, and it would work with the 720 as well, is increase the voltage going to the ionization chamber, making it more sensitive. Um, and he'd done it at a complete thing, so it worked, you know, on a thing where it, essentially all it did was it changed it to milli ronkens, not ronkens per hour. So where it would normally go up to 500 ronken, it now went to 500 milli ronken. Um, so yeah, he basically made the unit more usable for most people because it worked at lower radiation levels so you know you could detect regular gamma fields with it yeah it's very similar to that that m17 guy because i've got a couple of ammo boxes um and yeah same sort of thing but yeah i really like the cdv 715s again if you want a geiger that does a really good range of units that's not the one to get because the cdv 700 is a very high accuracy um like fairly low range geiger it goes from Zero literally like starts at zero, like not one that you know starts at zero and then really quickly goes up at zero, like you know, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 milli ronkens, all the way up to 50 milli ronken. So it's a very, very small ratio of this, even with the selector switch, you know, set to 100, it only goes to 50 milli ronken, which is not very high capacity for a Geiger. Yeah, annoyingly, I didn't win that bid on the one the other day, hype because I because I didn't put any higher bids than like the max 10 pounds I put on it. Um, somebody beat me by like one dollar or whatever it was um again i don't know what their top bid was they could have gone to like 30 dollars and i wasn't really going to bid any more on it um because like i said i need to be saving money um and i'd already put a bid on that like a week ago but yeah the um these are nice um the thing is yeah while they are nowhere near as practical or round as something like soviet dps or um the polish dp series these are very good if you are probably more into amateur geiger stuff and wanted to just get you know, it to click more because of how sensitive it is. All right, cheers. Thank you, Shot Zombie. But yeah, in terms of functionality, if you wanted one that, you know, does zero uh, milli ronken essentially, all the way up to 200 ronken, and that's why in Chernobyl when Sitnikov, I just thought this is a nice, de nice detail, said, you know, we found a Geiger counter in the military fire department, or we found a symmetry in the military, you know, fire department, whatever he says. Um, it's not as good as our one, but it, um, the one with a 200 ronken capacity, and it maxed out at 200 ronken. 
That's because Soviet DP5 Geiger counters, the highest reading they give is um, 200 Bronkman. Um So, yeah, that's just a nice bit of detail in the Chernobyl show they got right. But if you were using a Soviet Geiger counter, the highest reading you get is 200 Bronkman, unless it was a very specialised one. But annoyingly, I couldn't find, um, you know, much info on um, Soviet higher range, like iron chambers and um, Geigers. I did find some pictures where they'd done parallels of like 20 regular, whatever the name is of their Geiger tube, um, in like a row in the kind of thing, um, which is kind of like a really Soviet way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah, it's the green one, isn't it? There's also a DP5, DP, uh, DP5, isn't it? DP5, um, one of the models, when the divers go into the thing, isn't there, in episode two? Yeah, it's the third episode, I think, but yeah, and like the start of the third episode of the divers as well. Yeah, there's. I'm pretty sure when the divers have one, it's like a DP5 case, isn't it? When they look down at it. Um, yeah. The thing is, I love all this tech. Um, sorry. All right, yeah, but yeah. All right, thanks for letting him know, Mike. But yeah, Mike let me know about that. Otherwise, I wouldn't know. There's not really any camos I do for myself uh, on there as a design, unless I can think of something really good to do. But yeah. To finally get some Blumenthal that Shot Zombie wants me to get. He can take a picture of his, as I said, and then upload it. I can pay the Teespring things, because he's donated quite a few times. And then I'll finally have some Blumenthal. Yeah. But yeah, so all these old Geiger counters are nice. Even this German one, which is, you know, if it works or not, I don't know. I will know when I get some radium because you can get enough gamma off a of radium to trip these. Um, but yeah, this is a lovely looking unit. But it's a good example on how not to overcomplicate something designed to survive nuclear war. Because this is designed iron chambers compared to Geiger counters are the real shit hit the fan units. Because, you know, they can go up to higher readings like 500 bronchen and stuff like that. Some iron units can go even higher than that because in theory iron chambers don't oversaturate with radiation like um, Geiger counters can, because Geigers can trip. There are a few videos on YouTube where people demonstrate it, but basically when you've got too much decay or whatever hitting a Geiger tube at once, it just kind of causes the needle to shoot back down. Um, but yeah, if you're making an iron chamber to survive nuclear war, and bear in mind internally, it could look as simple as the CDV-720, this model. Um, don't design it like this. Because, you know, it's nice having a really cool functional unit like this with all these different things, features. But if the nukes go off and one of your tiny little components inside gets broken and it doesn't work anymore. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You don't know what you're being exposed to. Um, well, I'm not planning for any sort of shit hit the fan type thing, TJT. Depending on what sort of thing happens, some of the gear might help me, some might not. But as I'm chronically ill and I require, you know, like a medicine I have to take every day. For the rest of my life um, that I can only store for like a month or two at a time and I can only get so much on prescription at a time um, you know I don't I don't plan really for it for that reason because I don't want to slowly fall apart internally when my medicine runs out you know at that point I'd rather kill myself in all honesty so um yeah Ah, uh, yeah. I've seen um, some hype where they're the digital ones which do an overflow mode, where they basically tell you the reading will be really inaccurate. Um, yeah, because I've seen that on some where they go into overflow mode, where they're basically telling you this is what they're guesstimating the reading is, but bear in mind it could be quite inaccurate now. Like, you know, they cover what a certain range really accurate, to a really good accuracy degree. Um, but, you know, after that, it's... Yeah, if you can get a DP5V for a good price, certainly. Um, the only issue you have with it, Chris, is you'll either have to rig it up to a 12 volt using the adapter, or you'll have to modify the prongs inside to take AA batteries. Other than that, yes, DP5s are very user friendly. Um, as in, there's one switch on it that goes through the different radiation ranges. You've got your Geiger probe, which is pretty solidly built on it. DP5s are actually fairly compact for how solid they are as well. Um, but yeah, for what they are, DP5 series Geigers are lovely. Um, I'll definitely get one to keep at some point. Yeah, for that price, that's not too bad at all, is it? I mean, sometimes 
some of these are getting close to the 100 USD prices anyway. If you if you could get, um, yeah, if you could get one of these just as a Gaia counter unit itself, or for like $30 more, get a DP5V. The DP5V is a much more practical Geiger for most people. Um, all right, Bartos. If 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 you could get like one of these CD ones in America at like a fleece market, or whatever you call it, you know, junk sale for like twenty dollars, I just go for this, and then know when the tube totally saturates, get out of there, kind of thing. Um, B still has some DP fives. I'll just say that because he sent me mine for free to do a review on, although he does want it back at some point. Um, obviously, because he sent me, and I'm going to say that he has them. Um, I think they're probably about two hundred pounds on his, but. As um, Hype said, depending on where you are in the world, it might be more practical to order straight from Russia or Ukraine or whatever. Um, but I do know he's got them, you know, or a couple. But yeah, shop around, see what interests you. There's different models of DP5. I know there's the DP5A, B, and the V. Is there one more as well that came between the V and the B? Um, but yeah, if you want to um, see this one functioning, just because it's cool... Let's get that in frame. Hopefully the dial, you'll be able to sort of see that. The annoying thing of this is trying to film it. That handle normally gets in the way of the probe. But, um... <laughs> Abused or molested by Ukrainian army. Okay, that's an interesting way of putting it. But thanks for letting me know. Hype, that's a good point if I'm looking at them and they're similar prices. Um, but anyway, so that's set to times one at the moment. Let me plug the speaker unit back in. This isn't the amplified speaker I've got for it. That's that one, but it makes an annoying like noise when that one's plugged in. So I'll just do this one, which will click quieter, but it won't make the droning noise. Right. Yeah, so they had to just keep using the um, ones they had rather than, yeah, like building new ones and just having the old ones in sort of storage kind of thing. Um, so there's that. I'll show you that um, German source of this because that'll be interesting. I wonder if it reads as well as the Chinese tube does. Um, if you want to see uranium ore of this, because it will actually get a decent reading off of uranium ore, this one, because of how sensitive it is. And I'll wash my hands afterwards on the pro, by the way. I just can't be bothered to get the gloves on for the fiddly little containers. So that's that. Here's the other kind of uranium powder thing I have. That's a bit more active. Look, that spiked it. Let's go to times 10. Also, the Russian ones and the Polish ones have a zero button, which is really practical. You don't have to wait for the needle to get back to where it's going to go. What I'd also like with this, when you change the scale, the pitch of the clicks is slightly different. So if you're good enough at hearing, you know which scale the clicks are on. Anyway, we're on the times 10. So that's about 2,000 counts per minute or about three, two to three millironcom per hour. Right, so that's that's that other uranium stuff. It's more active, but again, it's more refined. Let's see, let's see what happens with this. Let's go back to times one. And bear in mind, the mini monitor so far, look, has been the only one, if I put that near it, that you know it does stuff with it. The reason it didn't super saturate in the end is because it was only reading a tiny bit through there. Um, let's try this one. So you can see it clicking, but notice how much lower the activity is because you essentially need an alpha probe to read this. This is a weird thing, despite it being a beta source. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that. Um, my extracted thorium in the test tube. 
Let me just put that like that. There we go. Get a higher reading there. Let's go to times 10. All right, thanks for letting me know, Hype, if I order one and they're similar prices, I'll just go for the Russian one with, like, the complete box kit and everything. Yeah, what is that $180? If it's $180, that's not a bad price at all if it's with the box, with the wand and all the other bits, like the extension wand thing and um, the battery adapter. The battery adapter is the really nice thing to have with it because it makes it so much easier, like the power supply adapter to just quickly plug it in essentially to um, like a car battery or something and run it off that. Anyway, what is um, this reading now? About, it's on the 10 scale, isn't it? So 1.5 millironcgen per hour, about a thousand counts per minute. That's the thorium lamp mantles when they're burnt down into ash. And of course, one of my good old favorites, radioactive American dinnerware, because why not? And yeah, just this little bit of Fiesta wear is giving a reading of um, about 4.5 millironcgen per hour between 2,000 um, 2, and 3,000 counts per minute. And this is just a tiny little bit. Um, right, the adapter, it basically looks like a battery cover for the battery unit with like two croc clip kind of big cables coming off of it. So it basically means you can use croc clips on them to put them on any battery contact, or you can just directly link them onto a car battery. Um, so yeah, that's that's Fiesta Wear. Also, I've got a much bigger Fiesta Wear jug coming that will hopefully come this week. So I'm very excited to see what sort of readings that gives off. Because if a little bit of Fiesta Wear gives me a reading like that, it'll be really nice having you like a massive Fiesta Wear jug that will just go on Geiger's. Um, anyway, that's the, um, oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely probably after Christmas hype buy a DP5V or whatever. Um, I mean, if there's a DP5B for like a lot less in the same condition, I'll just get that. But the V, if obviously it's, um, a very similar price, I'll just go for the V. Is there any main upgrades between the V? I know the V is green and like the B is the brown colour, but is there any actual major difference to any of the bits? Because they're, they're the same scale, aren't they, on like all the models of DP5? Um, anyway, let's just pop that back there. I'll wash my hands after the stream. Pop all these bits back in the bag. Don't want contamination. So it's just better all round. So it's just, I guess, when you're taking a reading, the reading's slightly more accurate due to voltage or whatever or um, quality of parts. Ah, cool. You still have the scale switch, don't you? But do you mean the bit where you kind of tune it in like a radio with the power supply? It does that on its own, does it, without you having to do it? That's cool if that's the case, because it means you don't have to keep going needle just to get it on the um, proper check bit with another battery. Or is, do you mean calibration is in zeroing? Ah, yeah, that bit. Because the thing is, with different Geigers and radiation meters, the calibration sometimes means a different thing. On some, it's like the really accurate zeroing, where you know you use a check source to calibrate it. With some, it just means getting the zero to the zero, and others, it's like power supply calibration. Um, but yeah, obviously, the less you have to do with it, as long as it's built where it's not going to go wrong, the better. Especially for people who are new to Geiger counters and, you know, just want something they can really easily set up and play about with. Um, yeah, I think you'd be very happy with DP5s if anybody got them, because, you know, they are so simple to use, and I cannot imagine them going wrong you know, as long as somebody's really, really not abused it. Because that's the thing is, the Polish DP-75, that's a really nice Geiger unit, but as Hype said, they're a bit more fragile than some of them. 
My Polish DP60, <coughs> sorry, DP66, that's basically the same ranges as a D, um, DP5, but the DP66 is bulkier, and um, the main flaw of the DP66 is where the probe comes out of the side of the box unit, that's where the wires are very likely to snap, because after I found out that was the problem of mine, and I looked up the translated manual on Vever Strelk or whatever it's called, that Finnish surplus site, um, Oh, okay, so the strontium comes in the probe, right? That's that's the main reason I'm buying a DP5B then, so I can get more strontium. Um, but yeah, the um, and that's actually quite safe as well, isn't it, in a sense? Because if it's one that's in a properly made thing in the probe where you just twist it with your hand, not um, you know, not like the German one where it's a little plastic cover blocking the strontium. You couldn't even use a little thin bit of plastic to block strontium. It just goes straight through. But you're not actually touching it with your hand, which is a really nice thing. Um, and it means if the end of the probe is shielded enough, the strontium isn't going to come out and hit you, the beta rays from it. Yeah, exactly. So it's a design that keeps you as safe as possible, and it keeps the check source the right distance for the measurement, which is a, another thing you want. Yeah, that's ideal, isn't it? Why couldn't the Germans have done that? Why could the Germans not have decided that... But if they... Here's a better way of doing the check source of a unit like this, right? On the on the actual case, you have the check source, and it's sealed in a safe thing. Um, and then what they do is they have a bit where you put the check source next to it, like, say, where that radiation sticker is, so it's you know where to put it for the iron chamber. You put it there, like on a flat surface, take your reading, do your calibration, take the check source off, put it back in its compartment in the bag. That's how the Germans could have done it. They didn't, you know, but that, that's the annoying thing with some of these units is you think there's such an easy way of getting around the problem, but sometimes the designers didn't do it, but you know, um, why did I take my phone off charge? It was probably because I was showing you the screen. Um, yeah, anything like that, if it eventually turns up for a good enough price, I'll probably end up getting it, <clears throat> but yeah, um, yeah, what was I, um, Yeah. What's the range on IMD5? Let's have a look. But for most people, I would definitely recommend Geiger counters over iron chamber units because you'll have a lot more fun with a Geiger counter because you can get lower range readings. There's an online store, um, which is sadly in the US, um, so they might not post to the thing. Um, oh, it's one that has defects. Um, that's why. Um, I was gonna say because otherwise, there's an um IMD5 with an SBM20 STS5 and SL3B T tube set for um $82.30 plus $40 postage. So, otherwise, oh, free shipping over $40. So, yeah, it's $82.30 full thing. So if anybody's in the US and wants a link, um, I'll link you. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Richard. Don't forget to like the stream. Um, I forgot the name of it already. Let me. IMD5s. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll like it. If you bought it somewhere like eBay, um, you'll get buyer protection as well. Right. There's one from Ukraine with £60 postage, so I wouldn't pay that. Um, but yeah, that's the only one turning up at the moment. It's from Ukraine. So it would work out like £180 total. And yeah, I'd, I'd just rather get a thing for that. But let's have a look at the ranges on this one. Um, so I assume 200 is 200 Bronken. Yeah, it's the exact same display, isn't it, as the um, IP5, where the top one is the milli Rontgen and regular Rontgen scale that just uses the multiplier, and then for the 200 Rontgen, you look at the bottom scale. Yeah. So, it's probably a slightly better unit than the IP5s, but personally, I like the retro IP5 look over that, and it's cheaper, so, you know. But yeah, I'm sure you'll like it, Chris. Also, one thing about the IP5, was it an IP5 you ordered? Oh, DP5, sorry, what I call the other one IP5, but yeah. Ah, that's cool. 
Um, but yeah, one thing that you'll definitely like if you've got a DP5, Chris, it makes one of the best ticking noises of any Geiger I've ever heard. Um, the headphones that come with it, they're actually decent enough headphones, even if they've aged a bit. It is a proper beefy, you know, click, 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 click noise. The problem with some Geiger counters is that they don't sound so good. You know, they're like quite wimpy little clicks or they have like modernized beep noises. But yeah, the DP5 um, makes a really good sort of noise. Um, I'm pretty sure in the Chernobyl TV series when they had the Geiger counters, which were DP5 series, they were using the real sounds from them rather than you know, like a stock sound effect for a Geiger. But yeah, if you're like me, one of the best features of a Geiger is the click. That's why I really like the mini monitor because it makes such a cool clicking noise. See, isn't that... That's the sort of click you want, isn't it, with a Geiger? Not some, you know, wimpy little <clears throat> modern noise. That's the thing I don't like with the Sox, right? The thing with the cheap Chinese Geiger counter I've got, um, let me get uh, grab it. I'll have to put the tube back in it, but the tube's just down there. That's easy. That's on my desk, isn't it? What am I like? Right. So, the Chinese one. Um, yeah, this is really simple. Yeah, see, every time I touch it, like, the um, text comes off more and more. My finger just removes it. But yeah, to do this one, it's literally just a positive and negative prong like the Soviet ones had. Um, so, what you do is literally put that in there. I'll just re tighten those again so it doesn't come loose while in service. Um, I did do a video on it, Depressed Vanity, but it, actually I did it in a stream, didn't I? No, there's a stream, search something like M65 stream, Type 65 stream, and there's a video where I did it live on the stream where I was just messing about and doing more and more on the stream. Right. Um, I've not got the battery compartment on it, so let's just power it via USB. Yeah, or we'll have um, a listen to the noise on this one, because it's a proper piezoelectric buzzer on this. So it's what makes the classic noises. No, the closest I can speak to foreign language is German, and that's just because a lot of the words are similar to English. Um, I couldn't really have a proper conversation in German. You know, could go, mein Deutsch ist nicht gut, sprechen Sie English, danke. Um, I could do something like that, and, you know, a, a very slow speed break down and read a lot of German words, but I could not talk fluently in a conversation with it. And German is the closest language to another one I can speak. Um, but, yeah, anyway, let's get another check source. Um... Let's just do that again with the... Yeah, if you listen to that, proper old-fashioned Geiger noise. You know, not as beefy or loud as it could have been, but... There you go, it's the proper noise. Definitely survive. I would, I would love to do that if I... You know, if I had millions and you could do something like that, sure. You could do whatever you wanted in there. You know, and you'd be pretty safe in there, wouldn't you, if you um bunkered it all down? Is that can you speak German? Uh, as I already said, pretty much nine. Mein Deutsch ist nicht gut. Um, we were just playing the Geiger counter just now. Um, well, most of the streams been talking about Geiger counters and ionization chambers. I'll do eight more minutes. So I've been on exactly two hours. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing. The Soex, right, are a lot more expensive. The Soex kind of goes, just does these artificial beeps, and they're not cool beeps like the DP75 does. They're, you know, like really wimpy sort of beep, 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 sort of noises. Um, but yeah, and the silly thing is, right, piezoelectric buzzers are like the cheapest way of putting a sound unit on something. So why can't they all use it? Because it's the classic noise, and it's exactly what I expect when I want a Geiger counter. But, you know, for what this is, this is great. Because, especially because these keep coming down cheaper and cheaper, and you can buy this circuit board configuration in a couple of different ways, like, you know, on the build your own Geiger units and a couple of others. But, you know, for what they are. It, you know, it, it's lovely. But bear in mind, the main flaw of this one I've just picked up is that it's 99.99 micro sievert capacity on the screen, even though, and it says that in the manual, so it's not like, I'm being dumb and I can't scale up the screen somehow. Um, it's so it's 99.99 microsieverts, which isn't all that high on the screen. Is that like 30 millironcon or 50 millironcon or something? It's not high in terms of millironcons. 
Um, the actual tube in it can go to much higher than that, probably 10 times that. It could probably get to about a millisievert quite easily. It's just the display can't do it for whatever reason. I don't know why, but that display. Um, probably a Vulcan bomber um, height, because I really like the massive British Vulcan, just because, you know, it's cool. It makes a cool roaring noise. A lot of space in it. You know, you could essentially live in it if you had to. Um, that's the thing. If you own something like that, you'd want something that has space in it, I guess, rather than a, um, you know, just a fighter, which has pretty much a cockpit and that's it. Um, but yeah, Vulcans I really like. B-52s as well. Um, ooh, B-52s, yeah. You know. If you mean that one, I didn't buy it. I printed it off of Google Images. Go on Google or Bing or something like that. Type in Fallout sign or Fallout shelter sign. Open the highest res one and print it out. There you go. Um, you've already asked that question, TJT, and I've already answered you, so I'm not going to answer it again. It's, my answer isn't going to change in like the last hour since you've asked it. Is that the weird one that has a combination of propellers and jets survive? Let me have a look, like the backwards propellers, or am I thinking of a different one? Yeah, that is the one. So it's got the rear propellers and it's got jets on as well, isn't it? Yeah. Six props and four jets. Why not, I guess? Is there any practical reason for that? Well, as my ears are a bit blocked, I'm doing that thing with my jaw, which I shouldn't do because it actually damages the muscles in your jaw, doesn't it? Every time you try and pop it like that. But it's kind of hard to stop doing it when you start doing it. Anyway, I'll be off in a couple of minutes. So, again, thanks to Laser Point Productions for donating so I could get this mask and I'll do a review of it. It's very good anyway for my initial feelings and it um, holds the weight of, you know, like ABEX, CBRN type filters fine. Um, it's better than the Scott one anyway, I can tell you that straight away. But I'll do a comparison video on them at some point. Um, thanks to Hype as well for that massive £50 donation the other day towards the um, night vision I've ordered. Hopefully, um, I'll let you know as the week goes on, Hype, if there's any updates on that. And then, you know, I'll just contact the seller if I've not heard anything by midweek, like you said. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's much else to say. I've got a few very interesting check sources coming in the post, but I don't know um, if all of them will come this week, if all will come next, you know, the week after. Also, US CDV 715 on order. Let me check the latest um, tracking info on that just because that should be quite interesting. Oh, I've got 18 messages on eBay. I'll have a look into that later. It might just be a load of things saying your watched thing is, you know, ending or whatever. Um, still no tracking on that. Does the Fiesta Wedge Jug have tracking on it? Oh. oh, it has got tracking. It's just where eBay doesn't link to it. Anyway, the CDV 715... Um, customs documentation and labeling, de labeling at Erlanger, Kentucky, was the last thing that happened today at 1.13 a.m. So, yeah, it's still on its way. It's just that for the last week it's been traveling across the U.S., hasn't even left the U.S. yet. Tactical Pirate, you've done it as usual. You've come on just as I'm ending my stream. I'm on three more minutes. If you've got something important to say, get in quick before I go. Um... Oh, it's Strategic Hair Come On, the name of the movie. Have you seen... Um, there's Doctor Strange, though, obviously, the really famous one, and then there's another film basically based on the same plot, but it's not a comedy. Um, what's that called? Is it Red Alert or... Um, it's Safe Point or something like that it's called, isn't it? Whatever the um, name of the like holding points were for the aircraft. I think that's the name of the point. I can't remember the name of it. There's someone like Henry Fonda and is like the US president. Um, but the funny thing is, when you watch that after watching Doctor Strange, you're like, oh, a more realistic film about the premise of Doctor Strange, I'd rather just the really dark comedy version, like Doctor Strange Love is. All right, Mike, thanks for letting me know. Oh, Broken Arrows are when they lost the nuclear bombs, weren't they? Or like nuclear aircraft crashed. Oh, it's not all eBay sellers. One sure it's just the ones that do things like that. But there's it's not just eBay, there's loads of sites where people will lie about products or 
There's a bad one. There's around, I'm not going to say the name of it. That's just it doing it some. Um, although I'll mention something that doesn't quite work right on this. Oh, actually, no, it was fine. It's because I was holding it against the check source, wasn't I, to begin with? The the actual average thing where it does it like guessing an hourly average can sometimes seem very off on this one. But the, the current dose is always really good. But um, anyway, I won't say where it is because I want, don't want to bit bring the business into bad repute because they're normally very good, right? But when I went in a certain antique centre near me recently, there is a um, Soviet SSH-40 helmet, or one of the Warsaw Pact copies of it, and it is labelled as Argentine Helmet Falklands War, and it was like 100 quid. Now, if I remember right, didn't Argentina use M American M1 helmets? Uh, let me actually look this up. But I'm pretty sure they did not have Soviet SSH-40s. They may have done, but... Uh, they had an M38, which is a Dutch helmet, isn't it? So just copies of that. Um, but lots of them are M1 helmets that are turning up when I search Argentine helmets. Um, as in, like, US surplus M1 helmets. If any of the Argentine subs are minor on at the moment, let me know what they actually use. But, but anyway, yeah, the point is that... Um, they had a Soviet helmet, not even an M1 style helmet in there. And there was no certificate to guarantee it was an Argentine one from the Falklands War, but £100. You know, I could say that's Hitler's personal gas mask there. Uh, pay me £1 million for it. Um, that was Stalin's personal mask. That was Franco's personal mask. That was Elton John's gas mask. Oh, he's still alive, so he might be able to um, say that's not true. But, you know, that's the problem I always have if there's no certificates of authenticity with stuff like that. Especially when it's not even the model you'd expect to be the thing, you know. Because um, it just then seems like they're putting a random tag on it, essentially, to inflate the price and drive interest. Anyway, I'll be off now. Thanks, everybody, that donated during the stream. Thanks, everybody. It's been a really good stream tonight. Um, I'm really pleased because it's good when you do a two hour stream and nobody starts to try and be irritating or, you know, there's been a couple of people who've asked the same questions twice, but maybe they just miss me reply the first time. But, you know, for the most part, very good um, stream, you know, and I mean, for the 99 point something percent of it, very good stream. Um, I hope it's been informative somewhat for the people watching. And um, thank you again for the donators. Um, yeah. And as I said, for the people still watching tomorrow, I won't be streaming just because I've got a load of different shit on tomorrow and I don't want to try and, you know, promise to cram a stream in and then not be able to do it or have to do a really shit, like, 20-minute stream. Yeah, so hopefully the Pulsar, hopefully my CDV 715, hopefully my um, check sources come. But, yeah, All right, thanks, everybody. Um, I'll be off now. Um, like I said, stressful day at work, but at least it's been a good stream, so uh, thanks, everybody. And I won't stream tomorrow, but I'll definitely stream Tuesday at some point, I imagine. So, yeah, see everybody then. Goodbye.